Bukkenmine püüa Paulusi kirjast Galaadlaste. Venad, on ju kõi jutatud, et Abrahamil oli kaks poega, üks teeniaga ja teine vabanaisiga. Teenia poeg oli sündinud lihaliku loomuse järgi vabanaise poegaga töötusse kauda. Siin on võrdpildid. Need kaks naiste endavad kahte lepingud. Üks siina ei määrilid arja põlveks, see on Hagar. Hagar on ju siina ei mägi Arabias ja vastab nüüd selle Jerusalemmale, sest see arjab koos oma lastega. End üleasuv Jerusalem on vabanaine, kes on meie emma. Sest on kirjutatud röömustas sigimatu, kes sai kanna ilmale, hõiska ja hüüa, kes sai olle lapse vaevas, sest üksildasel on ennam lapsi kui sellel, kellel on mees. Teie aga, vennad, olete lissagi kombel tööutusse lapsed. Kuid just nagu tolla lihaliku loomusse järgi sündinud viusas, taga vaimud järgi sündinud, nõnda ka nüüd, kuid mida ütleb kirja sõna? Kiuta velja teenia ja tema poeg, sest teenia poeg ei tohi pärida koos vabanaise poega. Nii siis, vennad, meie ei olle teenia, vaid vabanaise lapsel, selle vabadussega, millega Kristus meil on vabaks teinud. Palun tõuske ja kuulake tänase püüavangiimu. Järg püüa Johannese evangeeliumist. Selle ajal läks Jeesus teise poole Galilea ehti Berjas järve. Ja tema ka läks kaasa suur rahvahunk, sest nad olid neinud tunnust ehti, mida ta haigetele tegi. Aga Jeesus läks meile ning istus sinna koos oma jüngritega. Ent paassa juutide püha oli liigi. Kui nüüd Jeesus oma silmad ülles tõstis ja nägi palju rahvast ennesse juurde tulevad, siis ja ütles Filipussele, kust me ostame leiba, et need saaksid ju süüa. Aga seda ta ütles teda proovile pannes, sest ta teadis küll, mida ta kavatseb teha. Filipus vastas talle, issegi kaesa ja teenari eest ostetud leibad eest ei jätku neile, et iga üks pisudki saaks. Andreas üks sa jüngritest, Simon Peetuse vend, ütles talle, siin on üks poiss, kellel on viis odra leiba ja kaks karakest. Kuid mis sellest saab nii paljudele? Jeesus ütles, pangi inimesed istuma. Seal paigas oli palju rohtu. Siis istusid nad maha, seal oli arvud umbes viis tuhat meest. Jeesus võttis nüüd leivad, tennas jumalad ja andis neile, kes maas istusid samuti ka kalakestest nii palju kui nad tahtsid. Aga kui nende köhud olid teis saanud, ütles Jeesus oma jüngritele, kogugi üle jäänud palakesed kogu, et midagi ei läheks raisku. Siis kogusid nad viiest odra leivast kogu kaksteist korviteid palakesi, mis oli sõjatest üle jäänud. Kui nüüd rahvas nägi tunnusteete, mille Jeesus oli teinud, ütlesid nad, tema on tõesti see profet, kes peab tulema maailma. Nüüd sai Jeesus aru, et nad tahavad tulla ja teda vägisi kuningaks teha ja ta tõmbus nägedesse üksindusse. Ruumistuge. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Dear faithful, the people who were just fed, had just been fed with this miracle of bread, they react to that. They say, this is of truth the prophet that is come into the world. So, the faith of these people is not that not pure yet, because next sentence is, they want to make him king by force, because he has given them a lot of bread. 
So they, they don't have a pure faith yet. But th this reaction of praising him in the beginning, this is of truth the prophet that has come into the world, this praisal of Jesus, that is a good reaction. That is actually a Catholic reaction, and it is called thanksgiving. It's the spirit of thanksgiving, to praise God for the things we have received. Praise the name of God. Thanksgiving. And this thanksgiving, dear faithful, is one of the main parts of prayer. There are several parts or kinds of prayer. But there are two main parts of prayer, main kinds. And this is first supplication, to ask God for things we need. That is supplication. And second, thanksgiving. These are the two main parts. And of these two main parts, the other parts come. They spring from these two main parts. So basically, most of our prayer is that, to ask God for things we need and to thank Him for the things we have received by praising His name, by praising Him. And God expresses this truth through the mouth of King David, who says in, in his 49th Psalm, And call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. So these are exactly the two parts. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Supplication. When we are, if we are in need, we call upon God's help. Supplication. Then God hears the prayer, I will deliver thee. He hears the prayer, and in return, we praise his name as thanksgiving, and thou shalt glorify me exactly what we're talking about in this, expressed in this psalm of David. Call upon me, I deliver you, and you praise my name as thanksgiving. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe there is the doubt in our hearts sometimes saying do we really need God in for everything? Do we need Him so much? Aren't we strong ourselves? Aren't we given the strength to do things ourselves, to achieve things ourselves? And not don't need God for that, maybe. Well, to answer this question, this doubt, it is helpful to consider our own poverty and misery. What do we have that was not given to us, that has not been given to us? Have we created ourselves? I don't think so. Well, I haven't, at least. I'm pretty sure of that. Have we given birth to ourselves? At least. No, not really. That was someone else. Have we raised ourselves, educated ourselves? No, that was the parents. Right? Have we fed ourselves when we were still little? No, that was mother. But, but, okay, Father, you speak about creation and childhood, but now we are grown ups, we are strong. We can work for ourselves, we earn our own money, we can achieve things ourselves, so we don't need God for that, right? Well, wrong again, sorry. Because since we've been created by him, we've been given everything that the, even our strength is being given by God. And he can take it away at any moment, actually. In one moment he can make out of a strong man an an imbecile, sick man, lying in bed all day long, just by a, a sickness or an accident, it can happen in one day. So this strength that we are given is given by God, and He can take it away. So even for the things that we are able to achieve ourselves, we must say thanks to God because He gave us the strength to do. So the truth is, 
be faithful. Some, I think in Lithuania, Independence Day was celebrated a couple of days ago. And I think here in February, I heard. So uh, that's good, because independence of a foreign country, that's a good thing. But independence from God does not exist. Independence from God does not exist at all. In nothing. In nothing at all. Not in the thing that we are, because we are given our existence by God. Not in the things that we do, because we're given the strength to do that. So there is no independence from God. And moreover, political independence makes us happy, but the spiritual de independence would not just make us not happy. If, if, we, if God decided to allow us to be independent from him, of him for only one moment, we would fall into nothingness and cease to exist in that exact moment. Because our being is dependent on the will of God. We only exist now because God loves us and wants us to exist. So if he decided for one moment to give us independence of him, we would cease to exist in that moment. So, the independence, or as I say, the dependence from God is a beautiful thing. It gives us everything. It is a dependence that makes us truly happy. So it has nothing to do with some social or political independence or dependence. This dependence from God is our life, is our everything. So we, the, better, the more we accept that, the better we are off because it will make us happy, because it's the truth. There is no independence from God at all. And this is, of course, even the more true of the spiritual things, of supernatural things, of grace, of good deeds that can merit us grace and, and heaven. Even more true, because without grace, we could do nothing at all to merit us heaven. Nothing. That's a gift of God too. We do this by His merits, by the merits of Jesus on the cross and with His grace that has been given to us. Only with that can we merit anything for our eternal life. Without His grace, we can do the greatest deeds, even apostolic deeds, but without His grace and help, there is no, no help for us. No help for us. So, especially in, this, in the religious sphere, there is a complete dependence on grace, on the grace of God, to do anything good. Everything else would be activism. Just do, 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 work, work, apostle, apostle, but without the grace of God, it's, it's hot air and nothing else. So let us be happy about our dependence, because it's our eternity, it's our happiness, it's our joy. Now, is it, <clears throat> since that is the fact that we are completely dependent on, on, on the love and the will and the help and the grace of God, I think we do have a reason to, to say thanks. And I think it would be a sin not to say thanks, even for the slightest thing, for everything for everything, because nothing comes completely, completely from ourselves except sin. But sin is exactly not doing what is good, what God wants. It's an attempt to be independent. So we see that prayer really consists of these two things, asking and thanking. It goes together. It belongs together. It's one. And I will tell you now a kind of prayer that is actually the most excellent, the best way to pray. It begins when we pray by considering God's infinite power. When we want to go to prayer, think about God's omnipotence his infinite power, but also his immeasurable goodness and
and wisdom, his love and mercy. Even when going to prayer, consider whom we talk to. He is, in, he is omnipotent, he is infinitely good, he is infinitely loving and merciful, and he is infinitely wise. He is wisdom. And to pray then with a firm hope that he will give us everything we need. Everything, because he's a good father. And he cannot be a different. He cannot never be a bad father. He's always a good father. And he will always give us everything we need. And we go to pray with that firm hope in his love. That is a good begin to pray, a good way to pray. Christ said that everybody who asks God in the right way, with humility and perseverance, will receive. It's a promise. Christ promised that to us. If we ask him with humility, respect, and perseverance, we will receive. And then, once we have received, not to forget to thank him by praising his name, by praising, by the laudatio dei, this praising and thanking God for his goodness, for the things he gives us. It is, it is a duty to do that, and it is a joy to do that. Oh, and, then, and this thanksgiving, this saying, doing thanksgiving, will increase our trust again, so that our prayer will continue to grow and become better and, and we can and we can just pour out our needs before his throne before his di divine eyes like a little child it is called the the prayer of effusion to pour out what is in our heart before God with complete trust the trust of a child it is, it, it, is, it, is, it is not even, it would even be enough just to tell him what we, what we need, not without even asking him, please give it to us. The great saints have only told God, they've poured out their needs, their sorrows, they've poured out their heart before God, and God has answered. He's answered this trust, this confidence of, 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 of his children. And I, I know a priest, and I will not tell you his name, for a certain reason. Uh, he, he takes a lot of um, mass novenas. People give him intentions for nine masses, and, and, and then he says, this, he says these, these masses. But what he will do, without telling the people that he does that, after he has finished the mass novena, he adds another novena by himself, of thanksgiving. Even without knowing if the, the intention has been heard, the prayer, just a th thanks for thanksgiving for, for hearing. And he always, always, always is heard by that. So he gets many intentions. Because people, people know somehow this priest, he's probably a saint, Somehow he, he gets us everything we ask for. Everything. Of course, except if it's sin. If it's against the will of God, of course. Then not. But, but that's his secret. It's true. He's heard a lot. He, God hears his messages a lot. But the, tr the reason is because he said, made, says thanks before it's even been heard. Complete trust in God. I trust you completely. I thank you already because I know somehow you will somehow hear me. This or that way. So I thank you already. And he's always here. So this spirit of thanksgiving that draws down graces from God, that is what I wish for you. And for me, too. For myself, too. For us. The spirit of the child. Of a real child. Of a good child. Your faithful, let us ask Our Lady to teach us to pray in the right way. To teach us. Because she of certainly had the best way to pray of every saint that exists. So let us ask her to teach us to pray in the right spirit, to, in, 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 to, to, to tell God everything we need, and always have a spirit of confidence and trust that we receive some or one or the other way, and already and do thanksgiving, thank him and praise, praise him, even if we're not sure if we've been hurt yet. She may give us this beautiful virtue of praying, of praying that is 
loving and, and actually a joy and, and not work. It's our, our, our great, let us say, a grace to be allowed to pray. It's a grace, it not, it's not just a duty. It's the most beautiful thing we can do on this earth, to pray and to worship and to be friends with God and to be loved by him and to love him. Let us ask our lady to give us this beautiful grace. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. I have to make a little announcement that I forgot to make before this sermon. Uh, this year um, there will be confirmations, but the confirmation will not be in Estonia. So I will talk and I have talked to the families already. I just announced it now that everybody knows it. Um, I've talked to some families, not everyone in fact. So there will be a confirmation, but it will not be in Estonia. It will be in Kaunas in Lithuania. And it will be very soon already. I was just given the news a week ago. It will happen already one week after Easter, on the White Sunday. So I already know that some people are seriously considering to, go, to come. I will still talk to respect to the, to the families that are, that are, uh, that, that are in, in question. Uh, but just for you to know, there will be a confirmation this year on White, East, uh, White uh, Sunday in Kaunas in Lithuania.